So I often get asked from my coworkers why I use an iPad or even how do you get the most out of using an iPad here at work? And I use an iPad every day in my nine to five job. So started a series and this is how to increase your productivity with iPad. This time we're focusing on the must have apps that you have to have on your iPad in order to get the most out of it and increase your productivity in your nine to five job, no matter what kind of industry you're working in. So. We're gonna start off with my favorite category of apps in this section, which is note-taking apps. Currently, my favorite note-taking app is Notability. And part of the reason why it's my go-to note-taking app is the ability to have custom templates with Notability and being able to design my own templates to be able to take notes or be able to pull from a library of templates. And I know there's, a, there's several other apps that have template creation and allow you to import templates and manage them. I've just found that Notability allows me to do the most with it. Now, Notability does have a subscription-based model as well. Currently, I use I had paid for the previous version of Notability. They're giving me kind of like a free run through of the app, so I don't have to actually subscribe. But I am open to paying for a subscription if the app brings the benefits that I need out of it. Another note taking app that's always often overlooked, but is actually getting better and better. And with iPad OS 17, I'm really looking forward to trying it out. And that's Apple Notes. Apple Notes is already pre-installed on your iPad, and honestly, it's getting better and better with each improvement. Apple is definitely pushing its note-taking capabilities to the next level. I'm looking forward to iPad OS's PDF uh, editing capabilities and the autofill features that are coming because it's taking the information that I've already pre-filled in with my contact and being able to autofill um, PDFs with that information and automatically uh, using machine learning to be able to understand where things need to be placed inside of the PDF form. So it's really exciting. Right now, Apple Notes I use just for personal business work and not in my nine to five job. I tried to use a couple of honorable mentions in apps. One app that I used to love and, and I still have admiration for is OneNote. So Microsoft's OneNote is a really great and powerful tool. The biggest problem that I've had over the years with it and the reason why I don't use it anymore as my note taking app is I have consistently had synchronization issues because the whole benefit of this is you know, you use a Windows laptop and you use OneNote, you can view all of your uh, OneNote directly on the computer, on your phone, or on your iPad. I take the notes on that device and be able to view them on my computer. I had so many different issues with synchronization. When I changed the devices, synchronization became an issue. Trying to pick and choose notebooks uh, became an issue. Honestly, until Microsoft really fixes a lot of the bugs and, inc and improves the PDF capabilities, because one of the biggest things that I want to do is create a PDF template or utilize a PDF template and be able to take notes directly on that template, but it take up the whole screen. Inside of OneNote on iPad, currently in my uh, last use, it doesn't take up the whole screen and it really bothers me that there's a bunch of side stuff that I can, I get that I could edit and add notations on the side, but the whole point of this, um, the way I've designed my note taking is to be able to fill out everything inside of the PDF that I'm working in. And that's one of the reasons why I don't use OneNote anymore. Another honorable mention would be GoodNotes 5. It's a great app. When you start taking notes, you'll notice that there's a certain way that you like the pen to feel and the way the strokes are, it just doesn't sit well with me and it never really has. So I, I've never really liked the pen options with, uh, with GoodNotes 5, but I know that a lot of people are able to get a lot of great thing, uh, a lot of great notes out of an app like GoodNotes 5. And I would still recommend exploring and figuring out the best note taking app for you. Uh, so downloading apps, trying, uh, doing free trials and things like that to be able to see if an app is worth your money or even just sticking with, like I said, Apple Notes and going that route and sticking to the easiest solution that's already preloaded on the iPad synchronizes with your iPhone. You could technically pull it up on a Windows computer on iCloud.com. So, you know, whichever one works for you right now, my main note taking app is Notability. Next up category is document creation and uh, document editing apps. And th this has to go without saying, 
the best applications to use for this in the business world is Microsoft's 365 series. So Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, just being able to create all of those documents, have them synchronized with OneDrive, it works really well and has improved so much on iPad over the years. Microsoft has definitely uh, given Microsoft 365 a lot of attention um, on iPad, giving you a lot of capabilities that you need to be able to edit your documents on the go, edit your spreadsheets on the go, edit your uh, PowerPoints on the go, and being able to do all of those functions. They've even, with the add of cursor support uh, back uh, several years ago, they made it easier to manage even things like uh, single cells inside of Microsoft Excel. So it has improved dramatically over the years, and it is definitely top tier in terms of what I would recommend uh, for apps. Feel confident that you can get your productivity done with Microsoft 365 and being able to do everything that you need to. Also note that OneNote is a part of Microsoft 365, however, in some cases, you can use OneNote for free outside of paying for a subscription. It does require a subscription to Microsoft 365 to get all of the benefits out of the note-taking apps. But if your organization is already paying for it, you should be able to easily sign into your work account and be able to start using Microsoft 365 on your iPad. Some honorable mentions, of course, in this category are Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, those are great apps altogether. I would definitely recommend utilizing the apps over the web-based version. While Safari, Google Chrome, any web browser that you're using can work really well, um, the web apps still can have little nuances and things that don't work as well that you'll find inside of the app work better. And that's the case that I uh, have found with uh, apps like Google Docs and Google Sheets, they just tend to work better when you're using them on device on the, in an app versus using the web browser version. Another app that I would recommend considering, especially if you're just trying to get something going, well, Google is free. Some people don't like being a part of that ecosystem. The Apple's iWork suite of apps also work really well and are capable um, and if you wanna stay within the ecosystem, it makes it really easy to do so. So they're capable. It's not my favorite apps, but uh, they are definitely more than capable of getting that work done for you that you need to. One app that I'll throw into this category that I've loved over the years and I've kind of used on and off and I've kind of switched away from it. Back in the day when I was really focused on creating my own templates for note-taking, I would uh, create a template and then export it to an app called PDF Expert. PDF Expert is basically a PDF editing application. It is drastically improved over the years, but the way that it writes notes inside of there, to me, it's a really great app. I've gotten away from using it over the years because I've just found uh, with Notability, I can take the type of notes that I want to take as well as import my own templates or use templates that are in the gallery and be able to edit those with no problems at all in the way that I would like to edit them. So I've gone away from using PDF Expert, but there are still little things here and there that I'll use PDF Expert for that I find are just easier to use inside of it versus uh, trying to figure out how to do it or realizing that I'd have to pay for something to be able to do it. Um, I paid for PDF Expert long ago I've been using it for a long time to do a lot of different annotations inside of PDFs and annotations of documents. So I've been a long time customer of it and I've loved the app. Still keep it on my iPad just in case I need to. And that's pretty much the apps that I would recommend for document creation or editing. Next up on the list are to-do apps. So you need to create a list of things that you need to do and be able to track how you're doing in terms of progress with those. My favorite app for this task, Microsoft To-Do. It is one of the simplest apps for to-do lists. Being able to set a to-do list, set a schedule, have the application give you notifications whenever that schedule has come up, it just makes things simple, especially if you're in the Microsoft suite of apps at work. Having Microsoft To-Do, while it's not necessarily a part of the Microsoft 365 suite, it is a free Microsoft app that you can use for simple to-do lists. I mean, it is just checkboxes. It's very simple and overall, I love using it. 
Um, some honorable mentions that I'll throw into here are Notion. Now, I'm going to preface this. Notion can be a little overwhelming at first. There is a lot of capability inside of this, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you now, I am not a Notion expert. Uh, however, in the past, what I found is Notion gives me the capability to track a lot of different things and be able to easily uh, understand and kind of take my brain and put it into an application. Uh, a lot of people use this for a lot of productivity hacks, so I will try to throw down in the description some links to some YouTube channels that uh, I've found over the past that have really helped me with understanding Notion. Uh, one of them is Thomas Frank. He's a really great YouTuber that talks about productivity hacks and things like that and, and getting the most out of things, financial stuff. But the other thing that he does really well is building Notion and designing it because Notion is basically a database that allows you to kind of house all of the information that you need to. Um, but one of the things that I love about it is being able to use a combine view for my tasks so I can put them into different categories and different columns and sections and move them along the path. So Notion is a great app. The other one, of course, would be Reminders. So Reminders is built right into your iPad. It's built into your iPhone if you're using that. If you use a Mac, it's built into there. You could technically also pull it up on iCloud.com. Reminders is what I use personally for everything else. So Reminders is a really great application to consider using and for managing your to-do list overall. Next up is how do you manage your files? So the way that I go about doing this on iPad is almost everything that I store is stored inside of some sort of cloud storage device. Right now, I pay for uh, two terabytes of iCloud storage to be able to manage a lot of different projects that I work on in terms of video, but uh, I also use it for managing a lot of my personal stuff as well as uh, some work stuff uh, for my nine to five job. A lot of my work stuff though lives inside of OneDrive, which again, circles back to utilizing the Microsoft 365. A lot of the times, if your organization is paying for Microsoft 365, you'll also get usually two terabytes of storage included with that, which means that you should consider on your Windows computer, if you use a Windows computer for work, throwing everything into OneDrive, backing up everything into OneDrive. So if for some reason you were to lose your computer or need to access something on your iPad, you can access it utilizing OneDrive uh, and just being able to pull it up. I can't tell you how many times it, it, it's been really easy, especially when I'm on the road and traveling for work, just being able to pull up all of the stuff that I need to on my phone, on my iPad, and being able to access it when I need to without having to pull out my computer. One, cloud storage, huge benefit. And two, it's really just about picking the ones that make sense. For me, I do a mixture. My company helps pay for the Microsoft 365 subscription. So I get the added benefit of being able to use OneDrive to manage all of my files. And then for my personal stuff and for some of my uh, side hobbies, I do everything else in iCloud. I do work with some people that you and have some stuff that I utilize in Google Drive, but for the most part, everything is done in iCloud. iCloud allows me to easily share stuff. Although, We'll note this. It's weird that I can't create a shared folder on iCloud without using a Mac. And I think maybe I could use iCloud.com, but initiating that on iPad is kind of clunky. Can't, doesn't work and it doesn't make any sense to me, but that's just a side note. Other than that, it's really easy to use. Once you get the share folder set up, uh, I can easily share stuff between people and it makes it really easy to manage. That sums up everything that I think are must-have apps that you have to have on your iPad. But did I miss anything? Is there anything else that you guys think need to be a part of this list? Throw them down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. But thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully you guys were able to gain something out of it and I'll see you in the next one.